Hey everyone. Welcome to Top Tech News. This is your news channel for getting updated with the latest tech news headlines and their impact on business and our lives. To read the full news article for any of the news that we cover, simply click on its link given below in the description. To stay updated, show us some love and hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. This way you would be informed whenever we upload a new video. Hi, my name is D and I am your host for today. Today's top headlines are Google Carrier Services Update Breaks SMS on Android Samsung Galaxy S21 to come with Snapdragon 888 Google Stadia arrives in 8 new countries Xbox Cloud Gaming coming to iOS and PC soon Apple surveys users on Face ID and USB cable Let's get started Google Carrier Services Update Breaks SMS on Android if you've been encountering SMS issues on your Android device lately, you're not alone. It seems that an issue between SMS and Google's Carrier Services app may be causing problems for some users. Over the past week or so, users on the OnePlus forums as well as in Play Store reviews for the Carrier Services app are reporting serious problems with SMS texts while the app is installed. For whatever reason, uninstalling the app seems to fix the issue entirely. Carrier Services recently received an update to version 50. That update started rolling out on December 2nd just before the first reports came out for this issue. While it's hard to say for certain whether or not there are more factors at play, the timing alone makes the app a strong contender for the guilty party. Users affected by the issue report that SMS messages are blocked from being sent or being received but uninstalling the carrier services app entirely fixes the problem. Apparently, RCS messages through Google Messages are not directly affected by this issue. Android devices affected by this issue are OnePlus, LG and Samsung. For obvious reasons, this is one we hope Google can fix sooner rather than later. Samsung Galaxy S21 to come with Snapdragon 888. With the Galaxy S21 series starting to leak bit by bit, an FCC listing has now confirmed that those in North America can expect the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset in the upcoming flagship series. There is a caveat here though as only one of the upcoming Galaxy S21 devices was listed on the FCC regulatory site. Model number SMG991U is the only model that has so far passed through the U.S. regulatory agency, but this is a good indication for the other S21 series devices. According to this listing, this device is likely to be the base model Galaxy S21 and is set to come packing the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888. During the Qualcomm announcement, Samsung was a notable absentee from the upcoming device list for this new processor. Part number SM8350 is listed in the FCC filing though, which puts to bed any rumors of a fully global Exynos-powered Samsung Galaxy S21 series. Other important data coming out from this listing is the inclusion of millimeter wave 5G connectivity, Wi-Fi 6, and the standard NFC support 2 for wireless payment systems. Although the Galaxy S21 coming with a Snapdragon 888 is good news for US and North American fans, it is still expected that global regions will get the Exynos 2100 chipset. The staggered chipset availability is one that has seen fans petition for Qualcomm's hardware in Galaxy devices over the past 12 months. However, we'll likely learn more at the proposed January 14th launch event for the entire Galaxy S21 series. Further regulatory listings in Brazil hint that the Samsung Galaxy S21 is to drop the charge brick from the inbox included accessories with this release. The rest of the specifications have already been detailed, but getting confirmation of the Snapdragon 888 will be music to many potential Galaxy S21 series buyers' ears. And that's because the 888 is a pure beast and likely to be an iPhone killer, unless Apple springs another surprise next year. We did a comprehensive features video on the Snapdragon 888. To watch the video, just click on that pop-up notice at the top of your screen. Google Stadia arrives in 8 new countries. Google has announced that Stadia will be available in eight new European countries over the next 24 hours. This includes Austria, Czechia, Hungary, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, and Switzerland. As before, the price is €9.99 a month for the Stadia Pro service, with the first month being free. This doesn't actually include the cost of the games, such as Cyberpunk 2077 releasing on December 10, which you still need to purchase separately. You will have access to the games as long as you stay subscribed to the service. You will also have access to a library of free-to-play titles including Destiny 2 and the Stadia exclusive Bomberman are online. The Stadia service can be accessed on a computer, compatible Android smartphones, or on a TV with a Chromecast Ultra plugged in and the Stadia controller. 
Xbox Cloud Gaming coming to iOS and PC soon. A few months after Xbox Cloud Gaming landed on Android devices, Microsoft has revealed that it will bring the service to iOS and Windows PC this spring. Cloud Gaming is included with a Game Pass Ultimate subscription, which typically costs $15 per month, and there are more than 150 games in the streaming library. While you can already play many Game Pass titles on PC, as well as Xbox consoles, of course, the move to streaming means you won't need a powerful rig to run many of the service's more demanding games. You'll be able to play them through the Xbox app or web browser on PC as long as you have a decent enough internet connection. When Halo Infinite finally arrives next fall, you'll be able to experience Master Chief's latest adventure on your iPhone. Microsoft plans to make game streaming work on iOS devices through the web browser to bypass the Byzantine App Store restrictions Apple placed on such services. Rival game streaming platforms Google Stadia, GeForce Now and Amazon Luna all run as web apps on iPhone and iPad too. In a blog post announcing the iOS and PC news, Microsoft touted the success of its Xbox Series 10 and Series S launch last month without revealing how many consoles it actually sold. It said Game Pass engagement more than doubled in November and over 40% of players who joined the Xbox ecosystem for the first time did so on Series S. The latter suggests newcomers found the $299 outright cost for Series S and the Xbox All Access payment plan to be low enough barriers to entry for this generation of console gaming. Microsoft says it plans to expand cloud gaming to more markets next year. It recently started testing the service in Australia, Brazil, Japan, and Mexico. Meanwhile, Xbox chief Phil Spencer recently hinted at plans for a Chromecast-like dongle that would allow you to stream games directly to your TV, so Xbox game streaming could be on the way to even more devices in the near future. Apple surveys users on Face ID and USB cable. Earlier this year, before the announcement of the iPhone 12, Apple surveyed some users about how they use the USB power adapter that used to come in the iPhone box. The company is once again asking for the opinion of its consumers, this time to find out if iPhone users are unsatisfied with Face ID and if they use the USB cable that comes with every iPhone. A 9-to-5 Mac reader shared a survey Apple sent him with some questions about his experience with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, so it seems the company is targeting consumers who bought one of the iPhone 12 models introduced this year. Among multiple questions, the survey asks if the user is not satisfied with Face ID and if the answer is no, there are some alternatives to share details with Apple. Just as Apple surveyed what people did with the USB chargers from their previous iPhones before removing the power adapter from the iPhone box, the company is once again looking at what users think about something that is rumored for a future product. It's hard not to associate the survey with the rumors that next year's iPhone will have both Touch ID and Face ID authentication. Although Face ID is an amazing technology, it has some limitations where Touch ID stands out and many iPhone users aren't happy with having to enter the password every time to unlock the phone since Face ID doesn't work with masks. Even if Apple didn't specifically mention masks, that is implied when it asks about facial recognition not working in specific situations. Moreover, the survey also brings a question about which items included in the iPhone 12 box consumers actually use. This includes Apple stickers, the SIM ejection tool, and the USB-C lightning cable. Is Apple planning to launch iPhone 13 with even fewer accessories? Will Apple force us to buy MagSafe chargers? It's too early to guess anything now, but 2021 could definitely bring us more surprises on that. Well, that's about it for today. Hope you found it helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. And do show us some love by clicking on the thumbs up button. Have a wonderful day everyone and we will be back again soon.